Welcome everybody to Compass Games Town Hall number five, the big zero five. So it's John Kranz, pleasure to be with you here again. I've already got a great crowd on YouTube and Facebook. Thanks for joining tonight. I have quite a few things we're going to be uh, covering tonight. Of course, with Bill Thomas, president and owner of Compass Games. Uh, before we do so, I've got the obligatory messages before we dive in. I'd like to share with you just a few things that have happened since we last spoke, actually just last night. Uh, yesterday on the 5th, we held a special impromptu live stream play session. Think of this as a designer preview. So uh, Christopher Davis was on with us a little over a month ago. It was uh, Compass Games Live episode 35, which you can find on our channel. And he we talked largely about Operation Storm. And he had you know really the nice idea, what about if I could do a Vassal, you know, do some sample turns in Vassal, show some more of the playtest components, give everybody a better idea of where I'm at with the design. So we spent about an hour uh, yesterday doing that. And uh, the good news also is, especially for those on YouTube, watching on YouTube, is this uh, streaming service just upgraded to HD 1080i. So the quality of the stream is better, especially if you're on YouTube. And uh, we're going to keep our fingers crossed. Uh, when Bill comes on with his internet, we're going to see how Bill's internet's doing. So we're doing a warm up. Uh, the wheels, you know, got the hamsters turning the wheels right now. So we can't bring Bill on yet. Hamsters are still turning the wheels for his internet. So we'll bring bring him on here in a moment. I just want to make you aware. I'm looking for feedback on uh, really it's sort of like a designer show and tell or show and play a preview sneak peek of what's in development. And obviously having Vassal components is great so we can easily share it. So if you get a chance to watch it, if you could please send me some feedback of what you thought about it, that would be terrific. In the meantime, as we always do, the obligatory message about our website, what's happening. So again, uh, our next release will be Red Poppy's Campaign Volume 3, Assault Artillery. That's shipping on Monday. Then we have one more release for August. It's Commands and Colors Tricorn, Jacobite Rising. It's a standalone game. So if you don't have uh, American Revolution, et cetera, it's not a problem at all. You can uh, play the game right away, right out of the box. And then we have, uh, again, we do our customary two releases per month. We've been doing that over a year, almost two years now. So the two releases in September, uh, first one's going to be Dawn's Early Light, which was also featured on Kickstarter. And then uh, The Korean War by Joseph Bukowski. So looking forward to those titles through September. It's on the website, as you can see. As another reminder, just to the left of the schedule, you'll see the big yellow orange box. Please um, put your email address in there. Confirm you're not a robot. Uh, and uh, we'll just send you an inbox message once a week uh, with, with the latest happenings. And then bottom right corner where you see the little talk to us, uh, me waving my hand, uh, that's where you can send us feedback, which we're actually using for all our town hall meetings. So we have some content already prepared for tonight because some of you have reached out to us through that little button on the bottom right side. And as a reminder about the newsletter, when I mentioned signing up for the newsletter, uh, here's the most recent newsletter that just went out on uh, two days ago. Uh, yeah, one day ago, just yesterday, August 5th. Uh, it's, again, it announces uh, Assault Artillery, Red Poppy's Campaigns Volume 3. This is a standalone game. Uh, really great in historical value, the map, order, battle research, the units, etc. Uh, really a great series, uh, really great rich detail, but the game system's not overwhelming. You know, it's got a good, it's got good teeth to it, but it's not an overwhelming, overly complex system. So please check it out. Again, uh, this is also on our website, but just want to share with you again, the newsletter, we're going to keep you abreast of the latest happening. So our upcoming summer releases, we just walked through those three titles already. Uh, we're doing this right now as we speak, our next uh, video broadcast we like to mention. And then also I want to give a shout out uh, our last Compass Games Live last week. Uh, 37 was with Mike Wilner for Prelude to Revolution, covering the Prelude to the Russian Civil War. Got a lot of positive feedback on that session. And of course, you'll find it on our uh, web web page as well on YouTube, uh, on the YouTube channel. So again, that's a little bit about the newsletter, but enough of that. So again, the hamsters are a little bit tired out. So I think the wheels have been turning and churning and burning. So let's go ahead and uh, welcome uh, Bill. Hey, how you doing? Hey, you haven't dropped off yet. Look at that. Well, Three seconds and we're good. I'm very well, confident. Yes, and, and I'm pretty confident too. So hi to everybody. 
glad everybody who's attending and listening. I've got a list. I wrote down my little list of things I got to talk about. Very important. I can't oh, read my own. And the thing I'm looking at, I can't read what the third one was, and I just wrote it. So now was that was that list approved by uh, the entire Compass staff, or the buck stops with you and you don't share it? You don't share no, it with I, Billy, I, or I can't even read it to somebody. I can't even read my own writing. I uh, just, okay, so I got a, I got a few things I want to cover that won't take a lot of time, and then we can go to questions and do okay. that. Go for it. One thing I wanted to say is um, that the counters for games that are made in the U.S., meaning they're not mounted maps, okay? What happened was the counter, things didn't go as well as I thought with the two people I were work, was working with in the U.S. So how it's going to work is the counters and the cards for those games that are made in the, everything else is made in the U.S. except for the counter and cards. Those I have to outsource. I'm still looking for a U.S. company to do it. Okay, the two people I had, um, one actually said he they're not doing it anymore. They're shutting that division down. And the other company said they couldn't even do it. So, so other games that are mounted, so I just want to clarify, games that are mounted are made in China. The whole game is. Okay, if the game has paper maps, then everything but if the game has cards and counters, obviously, those are not made in the U.S. So they're not 100% made in the U.S., but they're going to be about 80, 80 to 85% made in the U.S. So I'm happy with that because I'm still keeping a lot of um, stuff in the U.S., okay? And I'm still looking for a U.S. counter, but for right now, now Red Poppies 3 was the last one, knock on wood, with the old counters. That was all made in the U.S. There wasn't anything that wasn't made in the U.S. on that, but that will be the last we see of that for ones that are made with paper maps will be made in the U S except for counters and cards, if they have any. So the next thing I've got to say is frontier actually came out here last week and spent an hour and a half fixing this. Lord have mercy. So, and here's the great thing. It's so far get, so good. And this I is a tiny charge one. for it. My you wife, goes, how much do we owe you? And he goes, it's um no charge. Oh, I thought you gave him a bunch of your uh, games that are in the warehouse that nobody can buy yet as, as, as like a way to thank him. Like you gave him uh, an attrition of souls. And uh, what are all these games you were showing last episode that nobody can buy right now? You're not shipping them. I heard you gave those to the, to, to the rep. I did. Well, you're yeah, a troublemaker. Exactly. So <laughs> I'm not talking to you. Okay. So that, okay. So then another thing. Oh, Okay, we are we are updating our website. We are going to a new website. We've been working on it for about six months, nine months, six to nine months. Okay, we are. It's going to have a new pre-order system. Oh, you're going for the Audible. I can tell Bill's going for an Audible stage left, guys. What? He's going for the Audible right now. Watch out! This could get dangerous. I don't. I don't like these Audibles. All right. Oh. Back to you, Bill. <laughs> I, I see an audible in the works here. I know how this works. And, it's, and I'm not good. I'm not like Tom Brady or these. <laughs> I can't do it on the fly. Um, my God, I, I've been thrown off. Okay, I know, I, I know. On track. Well, wait, wait, here's a question for you. Okay, we're going to throw in a question oh, to, help, got, you, no, to no, help you get I'll back go, on track. I got to go through this. Oh, you still want? Okay, yeah, keep going. All right, I don't want to. You're I doing great. Yeah. Go for oh, it. Okay. So the website will have a new pre-order system, okay, because our pre-order system isn't very good. It's going to have some updates, and we are in the process of um, looking that that will probably happen the beginning of the year, okay, because we want to make sure we get all the bugs out and do that. So that's good, okay. Um, second thing, I get a lot of questions about shipping overseas, okay, and how that works, and we'll, we'll take Canada for an example. Okay, if I if I ship a three pounder under box, it goes first class, and I can ship it to Canada for about twenty nine dollars a game. Okay, once that goes over three pounds, it could go three pounds one ounce. That's how it could go three pounds two ounces. 
once it goes over there, I can't mail it first class anymore. It has to go priority. And the jump in price, uh, that's uh, uh, the jump in price from first class to priority is like $20. So for that one ounce, that game now costs $45 to ship. Okay. Yeah. And that is true when you I ship to Europe, when I ship that if it's under three pounds, and what happens is with games with mounted maps, that's why games with mounted maps, we charge $41 to Canada. Okay. And I think we charge 58 overseas. Okay. It actually cost me, okay, probably to ship it to Canada is probably costing me $55 to $60 actual price. And to um, Europe, it's probably costing me probably 70. So that's the problem is once you get over first class, there I can't ship it first class anymore. It's got to go priority mail and it hits that. It's like a, another thing where it's just, they put $20 on just for it getting over that ounce. It's crazy. Oh. These shipping costs are like, uh, yeah, there's really no uh, work around there. Um, so it's not that I want to do it. And, and yeah. that, that's why when you look at our paper, like red poppies too, that's under three pounds. Mm -hmm. So Canada will pay $23 or $25. Overseas will pay $33. If that came in at 3.1, it okay, goes, it goes uh, yeah. $145 to ship, and you're talking $58 to $65 to ship. So I wanted to mention that, and I want to – well, you already mentioned Red Poppies 2 is out. Or 3, my God. 3, That's yep. 3 coming me. out on Monday Jeez, on the 10th. It's and, going fast. It's going yeah, fast. See? And Jacobite is coming out at the end of the month. Yep. So there's our two for the month. That's our two for uh, for August. And uh, so that's and my have, list. Yep. That's that's I things I wanted to get out. And now um, I'll take some questions. I'll show you some questions if that's okay. So yeah, uh, first question, first questions from Kevin. Uh, Kevin, who's joining us on Facebook. Thanks, Kevin. I'm looking forward to the new pre-order system on the web page. So thanks for that. We're looking forward uh, to the new website as as well. Uh, another gentleman asked, uh, will the pre-orders um, be lost? Like when you switch systems, uh, will the pre... Yeah, here we go from Matt. So Matt's who's joining us on YouTube. Uh, he's saying hopefully the pre-orders aren't going to get lost. He says he remembers when another publisher switched websites. No. Uh, they lost all their pre-orders. Uh, no, you know, we're going to no, they're still going to be able to come in. Okay, so perfect. In. Yep. So everybody is very excited about your internet connection right now. So hey, we're getting yeah. wow. a lot of a lot of rave reviews on your shirt, which we can actually see this time because you're not cutting out all the time. <laughs> so uh, that's the good good news there. So I mean, I'm just going through the questions here. Uh, yeah, one thing I've asked this broadcast service to have is a way to flag comments. So I can easily retrieve them because we've got so many comments from people. It's hard to go through the list and be able to find them again. So, uh, so here's a question here for you, Bill. Uh, vexed on YouTube regarding Compass Expo. Does Connecticut have a travel ban into the state for most states like the uh, onerous um, Massachusetts has? So, yeah. Yes, they do. So Connecticut does have a travel ban? Yeah, it looks like, and I'm not going to make it official yet. It looks like we're probably going to um, cancel it. Okay, I'll know more in a week, but but it, it, it's the travel ban. It's I don't want to take the risk. I, it's uh, people coming out and maybe something happening. You know, it's not worth it, and I don't want to um, put anybody in that position. And I think I think attendance, I think people are not afraid, are afraid to go out to do this. And like I said, 35 states can't even come into it. Connecticut. And now yeah. they just changed it. In Connecticut, you used to be able, if you came into Connecticut, you could come and take a test. Or if you had a test done, mm -hmm. you didn't have to quarantine. Now they say, no, we're not accepting tests. You have to quarantine for 14 days. So yeah. and, and look, it's not until November, but I, I don't want to, it looks like right now I'm leaning towards that we're just going to cancel it and go on to, and um, everybody will um, I talked to the hotel and nobody's going to lose their deposit. Nobody's going to, and they said they didn't even charge the credit cards for yeah. hotel days. 
and that they'll just keep them on file for next year. Yep. And if you paid the registration money, you can either apply it to next year or I'll give you the refund. Okay. But I, I think that, um, I think that's going to yeah. be, I think, right. I think we're sorry to hear that collectively if it's going that route ultimately, but I don't think anybody's all that surprised to be honest, given the restrictions and everything. Um, you know, I went through, I've been in your shoes as well. I've got no travel in two weeks to Arizona for the first time in 20 years for Consum World Expo because I had to cancel uh, for this year as well. So it's just been, uh, it's been a pretty lousy year other than the great game releases we've had to enjoy and, and these meetings with our uh, meeting with our customers and, and being able to yeah. connect with our customers like tonight. This is really the, 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 the fruits of our labor. We can't do it in person right now, uh, which is a drag, but it's great to be able to at least meet, uh, you know, online with everybody. So thanks for the update on that. So some more questions that have come in. Uh, Richard's asking, uh, how does Red Poppy, sol uh, how well does the game Solitaire play? Um, Richard, I don't know if you have the first two games in this series yet. I highly recommend them. I believe, uh, yeah, both games. I think the first, is the first game still in print? I believe it's still no, in print. It's out of print, the first yeah. one? So uh, the second game's available, um, still in print. Definitely uh, pick it up, Richard, if you don't have it already. You might not have it because, uh, based on your question, you might not know the system, but it's definitely Solitaire playable. Um, if you think about it, most games we put out, um, yeah, maybe they're the two-player variety. Games are typically designed for two-player, unless you're like a Gregory Smith designer or doing a Solitaire design, etc. But even for games that are two-player, etc., we always try to get Solitaire we, we always pay attention to solitaire playability, right, Bill? We, what's the one question you always ask me about a new project? There's a new project coming, Bill. And what's the first thing you say to me besides is the contract signed yet? <laughs> solitaire playable. Solitaire playable, right, exactly. So that might be mean adding bots or avoiding log sheets or, uh, you know, secretive moves, you know, plotted, pre-plotted action. So, so Richard, definitely the game is uh, solitaire friendly uh, for you. It's really important. Even with Vassal and everything, we know people are playing uh, Solitaire. So uh, also Richard's asking a question. So here's a follow-on. So he's doubling down. The daily double from Richard is now in play. So he's asking about the counters. Um, like, are these like the pop-out no-nubs variety, you know, the rounded corners, or is that just the the one mappers that are mounted that get that rounded, uh, you know, those nice rounded counters that just pop out of the tr uh, out of the tree? Yeah, those are um, just come with the China games. Uh, okay. That's what I, yeah. These will now. These are going to pop out. There's the ones we are doing now. Okay, will pop out. There's no. It, they're next. It's not rounded, but they're a lot easier to pop out. They're like China games in that they're um, in that they're easier to pop out. There's not a. They're die cut differently. Perfect. And then uh, Custer61, and thanks for joining on YouTube, Custer. Uh, good point about uh, Assault Artillery, or actually the second game, that there's tanks in the game. Yeah. I always think it's great having World War One games with tanks. I won't say anything stupid like there's Assault Artillery in the game, because that's the subtitle of the game. You know, that's sort of obvious. It's called Assault Artillery, so there you go. But uh, uh, I hope everybody, if you haven't tried out Red Poppy's campaigns, definitely consider picking this one up. It's still on pre-order. So it's a great time to pick it up. It's shipping literally on Monday. So hopefully we'll see Billy here drop in, say hello, because Billy's the one that's shipping out um, Red Poppy's campaign, uh, Volume Three. And what's nice is they're all uh, they're all standalone games. You don't need to have the other games left. Uh, Andy on Facebook is joining us tonight. Andy's asking how many folded gaps are left in the warehouse. Maybe that's a Billy question. I don't know. But uh, yeah, what about folder gaps? CS, CSS, uh, no, that's operational scale system. Sorry. Wait, am I getting it wrong? Operational scale? Oh, yeah, it's operational scale system, folder gap. Uh, the battle for the center. How's the inventory? Still got games? Uh, yeah, any, we any... Got, Okay. Right now we got maybe about 150. Okay, where are we low on inventory? Can you provide and share with us any games? Um, I think last time you said it was... Um, Stellar Horizons was yep. low. Um, I thought there was another title that was low besides Stellar Horizons. I can't remember, but my folder gap is I told Adam to he is working on Berlin as we speak. Okay, Berlin eighty five, which is the next to the series. Okay, okay. that game is going to be um, 
once he's done developing it, getting it done, that's going to be moved up in the production schedule to get it out as soon as possible. And I told him that that is a series I want him to keep doing, though, because he's got four or five in that series. Mm-hmm. And then he, and then Doomsday has been handed in. Yes. Okay, and that's a lighter version and a strategic, more operational strategic game. And then he's going to the Middle East for the next game on that. It's Battle of Germany is the first game. Okay. But then he's going to um, the Middle East for the next game. Or the Balkans. I can't remember what I told him. I think Balkans. I okay. Said. Great. Uh, okay. We're getting a, a lot of great questions right now. Questions are just pouring in right now. So I'm going to try to keep up. So thanks, Andy, for your question. Hope that answered your question. So we have about 150 copies of Folder Gap left. Michael's joining us on YouTube tonight. Any, and he's join, enjoying the 1080i resolution, which is probably pretty scary how we look, but oh well. Uh, Michael's asking any status on the tactical successor, the deluxe version of Silent War. I think, can you explain what that deluxe version is all about, uh, Bill, that yeah, you mentioned? It's going to be obviously um, China components, mounted map, rounded counters, or well, maybe not rounded counter, but counters, okay? Um, Thick counters. It's going to have um, IJN in it. Okay, Great. so it's going to be both of them. And they actually have a. I, Brian's working on a new scenario to put in. He's updated a lot of um, the IJN counters, so it's just going to be an updated version with. Um, I think we're going to have a new scenario in it as well. So, so, Bill, is it all three games? I think there was German fleet boats as well. If I'm not. No, mistaken. German fleet boats went with Steel Wolves. Oh, that one was Steel Wolves. So that's not part of the Silent War package. Yeah, Silent War. Okay, got gotcha. you. Okay, great. So that's great news. Um, uh, 99 Ninjas is joining us on YouTube, and he says, uh, really good news about uh, solo games. Yeah, that's our focus. I mean, uh, just to let you know, we have some designers that are dedicated to solitaire, purely solitaire games. Um, yeah, it's a big plus, but also it could be, uh, you know, it could be a negative for people that want to do two-player or vassal-based gaming. So uh, you know, rule of thumb is we take all kinds of designs, but if it's a two player, we do want to make sure there's nothing that's going to get in the way of solitaire play. Typically, the de- designers, and developers can come up with some ideas to uh, mitigate uh, or maybe offer both systems. If it has to be pre plotted, maybe there's a backup rule, optional rule for solitaire play as well. Um, here's a long one. Uh, here's a long one from Darren on Facebook. Uh, let's see. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I, I really like Brotherhood and Unity. So, yeah, thanks for the comments about Brotherhood and Unity. We've been seeing some great feedback on the game. He's trying to get his sons to play uh, as he doesn't have access to normal op- opponents right now face-to-face uh, with the situation. I, I, I definitely understand. Uh, he'll he'll be trying uh, Vassal. And uh, where's, where's the Vassal uh, module at for Brotherhood and Unity? I, I don't know if somebody else is looking at that. I think somebody else was looking at Vassal for this project. Uh, I yeah. haven't been involved in Vassal for Brotherhood and Unity. Yeah, Vassal, um, we're about 50% done with it. Okay, but here's my take, okay, and here's my philosophy, is it Vassal won't really, um, on the typical game, isn't going to come out within probably three to six months after the game comes out, okay, because it's just a financial issue, okay, on that people – People, if you put out Vassal, okay, and there's debates either way on this, okay. If you put out Vassal, you got people that can just go on and play it and don't own the game. So that that's always a big issue is that um, – so what we usually do is we start Vassal right when – probably a month or two before the game comes out, okay, but it's a lot of work. So right now it's about 50% out, 50% done, and it will probably be out in maybe three, four months. Okay. Yeah, so I know there were some comments on online about that. I saw some comments online about uh, our policy versus other companies' policies on when vassals released, etc. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, uh, just to share something that happened to me, uh, you know, people, you know, people. There's some people that have the viewpoint of how can it hurt sales because it's a good will gesture and all that. And uh, I, I, I get that point, but also I've seen messages, people posting messages saying. Um, I, I'm not buying the game because I have the Vassal module, and um, that's just they're plainly stating it. So uh, you know, it's you have to pick your side. You have to sort of pick your pick your poison there 
on Vassal. But I mean, at the end of the day, the message is we try to do Vassal for everything. Yes. Um, you know, we're not we're not charging for Vassal <laughs> or anything like that. We just ask to be able to get the games out uh, through the distribution channel to the brick and mortar stores because we need to support retailers as well. And we need to allow some time, especially with COVID. I mean, with the shipping delays um, to get yeah. games to brick and mortar, that's a few months delay. And uh, yeah, yeah, some people some people might not agree with that approach. But, um, you know, we're giving full disclosure on the reasons uh, why we release Vassal a little bit later. But we do release it and it's issued for free. And and uh, yeah, we're happy to see people playing games on Vassal after some time has passed. I get I get at least maybe four or five emails that say, "Oh, I don't own the game. I'm playing it on Vassal. Can I get a copy of the rule book? Uh, because I want a hard copy of the rule book." And so, so so you know, it does happen, and people don't always. There's a look. There's a great percentage of gamers who, when they play Vassal, buy the game. Okay, and then they support the hobby. But you do have a lot of people that don't. And then when I say, well, you don't own the game, and the guy gets offended. Like, so you're not sending me a rule book? And I say, um, no, because you don't own the game. You said you didn't own the game. So, um, so, so you know, it happens. And I'm not saying one way or the other. There's, But we do put up Vassal. I just like to get that first group of buying. So distributors don't get burned. My retailers don't get burned. I think that's the main point. I mean, I, I think that's something that's not talked uh, about a lot, but it, I know it's sort of the, the main priority focus we have is we want to make sure distribution through the brick and mortar shops, that they're fully supported, that, uh, you know, that's the first chance for you to have the game is, is uh, and look at the shipping costs we just talked about tonight. So we, we obviously got those issues there. So it even becomes more important to support the brick and mortars for Canada, UK, Europe, et cetera. But uh, yeah, if you just put Vassal out um, that early, we're still going to get Vassal out, and it's going to be free. But you're, we're we're going to hurt a lot of the retailers and stores if we do that as well. So not not holding back on Vassal is not like a money maker for Compass. We don't look at it that way at all. It's just about the distribution channel and giving you know giving that padding and time uh, to get it out for free use. So. Uh, and there's a there's some great questions on Vassal for status like brief border wars. I have to actually check on brief border wars uh, status for for Vassal. Um, unfortunately, some of the projects that I don't drive myself, I don't uh, I might not get involved uh, at all on the project. So um, I don't know if Billy or somebody else is yeah, maybe talking. The, the funny thing, John, you don't even know about your own project, so don't. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's my age. That's my yeah. age. That's the problem there. I should know. Brief border wars, I. My goodness, I don't know if we've actually had somebody because usually what happens is volunteers do the vassal. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, I see the stuff come through, and but what happens is you get guys who say in the email and oh, I want to do the vassal for this. Okay. And they do it and they do a great job. And but I I don't remember, and I might be wrong, I don't remember that I don't remember that we've had that happen yeah. on three border wars. So we'll, we'll have to check. Yeah, I, I, yeah, we'll have to check on that one. So, but again, the goal is, and and really, um, uh, I'll take it as a lesson learned on my side. I'll prepare a spreadsheet or just a tracking system that shows as games are released which ones have a vassal uh, module author already assigned. I think that will help, so I could answer most question and sound like I know what I'm doing. Much uh -huh. more, well, I could talk with a deeper voice. Hey, Mo. Yes, of course, it's covered. Of course. Here's the person doing it. So I'll work on that uh, in all my free time. I'll I'll put that together, right? Uh, another question is, what is the status bill for the South China Sea reprint that's offered on the website? And yeah. actually, same question for African Campaign, same question really for all, the, all those three or four games now that we put out at the same time. They're curious South, when they're going to be released. South China Sea is actually in production. Ah, great. There you go. It's actually being printed. So that's moving along. Um, African campaign. Um, what was the old? Oh, yeah. Zeppelin and Zeppelin Raider. And Pacific Tide. Yes. Those, um, those I wanted to wait. And, well, threw me for a loop with this whole counter thing. So um, those I'm going to be looking at probably next week on what I'm what I'm doing with those. If we're doing a deluxe version or we're just going to. Um, 
reprint what we got. I haven't decided on those three. Gotcha. And then thanks, Richard. Uh, sorry. Yeah, my head scrambled on the series. So if it's a company scale system for Foldagap, I stand corrected. I was thinking it was a, a larger scale, but yeah, no, company fine. scale, company scale. Uh, okay, uh, other questions in here? Let's see here. Uh, okay, so here's some feedback from Jack. And Jack, again, uh, hat tip to Jack. He uh, he just got under the wire. Jack I waited till the last second just to build up the drama. He was very concerned. And in the last hour, he sent an email, and he filled out that little contact button saying, oh, I'm in Canada, and here's the price for this thing. Can Bill please talk about shipping costs to Canada? So Jack earns extra. Maybe we get an extra die roll for Jack for his big contribution tonight for the free game later. But uh, so, so thanks for the vassal policy. You know, I don't, so sometimes, John, I sit here and I say, "What the h are you talking about?" <laughs> okay, you go. People think I go on tangents. You're you go on tangents that are so out in left field, and you don't even connect anywhere. Well, it's more north because of Canada than left. But yeah, I get your point. That's true. But uh, so Jack says, uh, and again, we know we're not going to make everybody happy with this policy. So our our um, job is to communicate clearly to everybody. Uh, first, to listen to everybody, get your feedback, and then provide what our position is on anything, and if anything's being under consideration, etc. So thanks, Jack, for that comment. So uh, Mo says. Uh, Good idea, John. You should probably know what the hell you're talking about. So maybe tracking the vassal authors. So Mo just called me an idiot. So thanks, Mo, for that. I appreciate it. Uh, Michael on Facebook says, I would pay an additional $10 for vassal, but I can see that enforcing compliance and licensing might be a huge headache. Uh, no, well, you, the, the issue is you can't. Because well, yeah, yeah. Absolutely I'm, free. So there's no way to shut it down on vassal's part. You know what I'm saying? It's not. It, it's a free software system, so we can. So you can't charge like five. You can't even charge like five bucks or one buck. Okay, it, the Vassal program won't let you do that because it's a free um, service. I I do know um, some people mentioned because there was a bigger discussion around uh, just uh, online games and how they're available. Sort of like Vassal, but it went further. And and some folks commented they thought that um, tabletop simulator that uh, you could actually through uh, what's this network called Steam, the Steam network that that hosts all these games uh, on Steam. They have all these online games or apps like like sort of a Vassal, but it's called Tabletop Simulator. It's similar to Vassal, and you have to pay for the game to actually get access to it. Uh, or or there's an I mean some games could be free on Steam. But Steam has a way to control cost, uh, but it's not Vassal, is my understanding. It's Tabletop Simulator is what it is. So, oh, Okay, There's... can I say something, John? Uh -huh. Okay, I listen to you constantly. You, when we talk on the phone, it's I can't even get a word in edgewise. You're talking, and I don't know what you're talking about half the time. Okay, now, we've, we've talked about this. This is an important thing to tell me about this Tabletop Simulation mm -hmm. thing. And this is the first time hearing of it. It's not Vassal, though. So, um, no, I'm, but yeah, I'm, no, it's a, it's an interest. I'm learning about it myself. So there's a network called Steam that hosts um, all the big. Have, yeah, we don't have to go through it now because we've already yeah. said. It. Yeah, but so we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it offline. But but I'd like to know that because if it's a, if it's something where people can go and play, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, through a through a different system, through a different program, yeah. it wouldn't be. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't be Vassal yeah. anymore, but it'd be. Thank okay, you. thank and you. Thank you for letting all the all whole world know before you even let me know. Yeah, and talk about stuff to me that is like goes in one. I, have to, I get off the phone and I go, he talked for fifteen minutes, said nothing, and I had things I had to say that I have to interrupt him, and I don't get what I want to say. Well, watch out! I might throw something like you at. I'm gonna throw throw a message like that at you just to throw you off. So watch out. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't mess with me too much here. I've got I've got my peeps in the audience. They'll they'll type up oh, the whole screen filled with text if you don't if you're not careful here. So uh, okay, let's see. Richard on YouTube enjoying 1080i on YouTube. Uh, it's too bad. I think this is about the printed rules. I'm guessing Richard, right? 
That's too no. bad because our four player group all have copies of Absolute Victory, but we couldn't get updated PDF copies of the manuals. I understand why it's just too bad. So, okay, so they've got the rules, they've got the game. So, something about an updated PDF. I'm not sure what is there an up? I don't know what that is. Sorry. No, we have the RADA, but it's not in the rule book. Oh, uh, okay. So he, okay. Has to, he has to print out the RADA sheet, but it's not in the rule book, I think is what he's saying. Okay. Uh, okay. He, uh, here, uh, Ninja's on YouTube. Hi, Ninja. Uh, he's telling Richard, uh, isn't the rule book PDF there on the Compass site? So we should have, that's another thing we do, I should mention. We always put our rule booklets on the website. If we don't, you yell at me to get it on the website. So we definitely put rule booklets on the website when the game is released. So um, uh, and maybe it's still the errata question here that maybe yeah, that's yeah. the missing link. And it is just the first book. So we typically just put the stand, you know, we put the main rule booklet online. Uh, typically we don't put like the playbook online. We sort of separate them out. That's sort of back to a vassal thing, sort of, I guess, to make sure you have ownership of the game. Um, okay. I don't know if I can take this one on or not. Okay, so this might be a, this might be a customer service email, but we're going to do customer service together in real time to watch Bill's skills doing customer service. So I wish I had a little countdown clock. Do I have some noises for this? There we go. Yeah, we can do a little audience. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> okay. Yes, Michael. Well, let me tell you what happened there. Okay, that old tricellary system, which was the old pre-order system that they charged on January, okay? Um, that's no longer, that system is gone, okay? The um, site is inactive, okay? And what happened was they pulled off, because the link was to that site, the link broke, okay? But the good news is your order, if you paid for that, and, I, and we'll check, and you say you did, so I believe you, okay? You are going to get the game. It just won't show up in your account because it doesn't link to that pre-order system because the pre-order system is gone. But we have, um, he, he's on the document that we use to, um, internally. So he'll get the game. He just can't see that. Okay. That'll yeah. I know that was a complicated issue with that celery script. They were basically going away pretty fast and we didn't get much heads, a heads up about it. So, but the good thing is we were able to print, I had printed out all the documentation before they got rid of it. Okay, so I have all the paper trails. So you're if you've paid anybody who've paid for the game, okay, is you're getting the game. It's on our list. So don't worry about that. Okay, great. So and thanks now, for your yeah. yep, thanks for the question because I've getting a lot of those lately. Yeah, that's a good one. So let's see here. Uh, other questions. Um where is Western Front Ace in the queue? So uh this is another one Bill doesn't know about. Yeah, where is this? I see because again, I can't ask you because you're always talking about garbage when I'm talking to you on the phone. Uh, this one, uh, so Ian Wedge is the artist, and he's made a lot of uh, big strides forward with the game. So the good news here, actually, it's all good news. I think the good news is there's uh, all the displays are basically getting done. There's more displays for aircraft. Gregory Smith is here online, and he talked about he had to add a few more aircraft displays because of variations of models. So it's very precise. It's a very comprehensive game. This is obviously the largest design Gregory Smith has done uh, has done to date, covering World War One. So it's a very big package. And the and the big news, which Bill doesn't know about, because I haven't, you got to catch him in the right, you know, in a good mood to sort of share things with him. That's that's sort of what's going on here. So if Bill's, if, you know, his internet was down, he was sort of pissy and not happy with his internet. So I didn't want to bring up stuff, but Greg has Ian Cooper. Anybody know who Ian Cooper is? Yes. Show Ian Cooper is the designer of Raiders of the Deep, a Compass World War I sub game. And Ian is a World War I historian and expert. And he's come up with more auto generator mechanisms for the game. He's come up with a bunch of new stuff that Greg thought Wow, I wish I had thought about that. We should add it to the game. This is all like bonus stuff that's completely cool that would just make the game better. And it would just be a few extra display cards to get all this content put together. It's not extra counters 
or you no know, extra maps, nothing like that. But it's it's more player aid cards to bring in some new mechanics. So so what's interesting, Scott, is this huge Western Front Ace package just got bigger because there's more displays and there's now even more mechanics, more options for play. And Ian Cooper is heavily involved uh, from a World War One angle and adding to the game. If Greg posts a comment in the comment thread, I will let him, I will share his comment. So Greg, go ahead and uh, follow the lead you saw uh, from that other long post we had. <laughs> Do a long post comment because Bill likes long posts and uh, like Michael Perry did and let us know your side of the story. So that's Western Front Ace. Can I just uh, interject here for one second? Sure. Okay. You just spent five minutes talking about something that I don't even understand the value of it. Oh. Tell anybody anything. That's all right. The customers know the value. That's the secret. That's the beauty oh, of it all, Bill. And this the, be is the, the beauty yeah. of it is, is, oh, my gosh, and, and you're going to do your seminar and say, I made this happen. Go here for a second, okay? Um, the vassal issue, and I just want to say, is not because I think I'm losing money. Okay, I think it's um, I think it's unfair. Okay, and I understand there's pros and cons, but I think it's very unfair that I got people that support Compass Games that buy the game, and then somebody can go and just play for free. That uh, again, that's just my personal opinion. It, it doesn't even have to do with the money. It has to do with I've got customers that pay good money for my games, and then somebody else can just go and play the game and not pay a dime. Okay, and that is um, part of my financial background. Yeah, that's a come financial person in my thing. That's just not fair. It's not about the money to me. It's about the fairness to my customers. And then they say, "Well, we want to play Vassal. We bought the game. We want to use a Vassal to play with other people." And I understand that point, and that's why I'm not saying I don't do Vassal because you can see we do Vassal. I says wait a little while to do that, okay, because I think that's a good compromise. But it, it, just, it just amazes me that everybody likes to get free stuff in, in America. And my thing is I've got people that pay good money and support Compass Games, and then you have somebody who doesn't pay anything and gets to play the game. Okay, that to me is morally ridiculous, okay? But that's not saying that I don't do it because I think there's a value mm -hmm customers who do buy my game that they want vassal so that's why i do it and it's the it's the timing issue you mentioned earlier and and right. it takes longer these days to get games to uh these brick and mortar shops it's going to take a few months but, but, but remember and the other thing too is it's volunteer so i got games where somebody's not i got games where people aren't interested in doing a vassal vassal, vassal module mm -hmm. okay so we've never said no to anybody that's doing them you know what i'm saying yeah, and then we're going to talk offline. Maybe this whole tabletop simulator uh, thing on Steam might be a way, something to discuss later. I haven't seen any comments about that online yet, but I think others are familiar perhaps with tabletop simulator on Steam. Oh, here's so. a question for you, John, that I see. Okay. We're going to switch it up. Okay. When will the eastern part of France 1944 be out? Uh, great question. So the latest status on uh, France, uh, sorry, the Russian 44 is what we're calling it, yeah. is that is a temporarily slash officially on hold. So the last update I received, it's a game designed by Mark Herman, or will be a, a new game design. And since COVID happened, uh, he had the game stored somewhere, all the research materials. And he said he wasn't able to travel out to get uh, the stuff he needs for the game. So um, I haven't followed up with him in the last month or say two months, really, to be honest with everything else going on. So um, that one, I'll just have to engage Mark Herman again to see if he's been able to pick up his uh, research notes or order a battle, things of that nature, where he can get the design submitted. Um, he, hasn't, uh, he hasn't contacted us saying I'm not doing it or anything like that. He simply said, I don't have access to get to the materials right now with the situation that's going on right now with, and he doesn't travel, I don't think, um, because of, you know, the risk involved. So that's Did the, that's what's, that's honestly where it's at right now. Wish now, I could give a happier answer. Yep. Yeah. Do, do me a favor. Okay. Because I'm reading some of these um, things and they're saying that DVG 
okay, actually charges for their well, yeah. it's not controlled. So, uh, yes, um, I think other publishers charge for Vassal modules. Um, they just basically yell at people that try to publicly share them or they don't put them on the Vassal org site. So, um, you know, there's no mechanism to stop somebody from just sharing Vassal. It can just be distributed freely. There's no, uh, you know, there's nothing in the program that helps with what you talked about, Bill, as far as security. People can just share it. It's just a file. One email, and I can have Vassal for any paid Vassal. You know, I just didn't pay for it. Somebody just gave it to me on the spot. But I'll I'll research it just to reconfirm. Yeah, yeah and we can come back to yeah. people. Yeah, exactly. So I answered this question from uh, War Steve. Uh, so thanks again, uh, Steve, for that. Um, so Mo was the one. Mo, Mo, if you have more information about that, or Custer, uh, if you have more information, you know, uh, again, I understand if they're charging. Um, I get that. I just think it's more of a question of, I think distribution doesn't change. I don't think there's any way around that. Um, okay, then we've got some, <laughs> oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, so Mo's on fire tonight. I think this is not, I think Mo's in the lead with comments. So tonight's tangent of by myself is brought to you by Applebee's official. Now, how many people, I don't know how many people know about this whole Applebee's thread. I know we've done five episodes. But uh, yeah, so we can't really probably cover that right now. Uh, we are called the Tangent Twins, Bill. That's that's scary. So oh oh boy. What? Uh, <laughs> so this Applebee's thing's taking over. We're gonna probably at some point have to come clean on this whole Applebee's thing for people that are going, "What the hell is all this Applebee's commentary about?" It's all Bill's fault, by the way. I may go on tangents. But my tangents only last five minutes. This tangent has lasted for six weeks. This has gone on for six weeks. But the beauty was it was just one second comment by me. It wasn't a five-minute comment like you do. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So a lot of comments about Vassal that some people are charging. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, here's Tabletop Simulator. You've got to buy it. Um, you can have paid... DLC for games or free module. So um, so I'll research that further um, to find out more about it. So looks like there's some information there. Um, but yeah, I think Tabletop Simulator is something to look at on Steam. There's also Tabletopia, by the way, Bill. So uh, just to confuse you further, there was a Kickstarter about three or four years ago, a company, Russian programmers uh, put together Tabletopia. It's, it's, it's like uh, this facile world. And Tabletopia has done a lot of online events during COVID a lot of online virtual events. They have the same type of concept. Uh, and then uh, Mo's going to shoot an email to Bill about it. Uh, Aid the Camp is something I don't think we'd ever support because it's yesterday's news. So uh, to be honest, Matt, Aid the Camp was really great in the day, but I don't think it's the standard anymore. Um, Vassal is the accepted standard. I think that I agree with that. My favorite module, guys, don't get mad at me, my favorite system is Sun Tzu. So Sun Tzu is my favorite online gaming platform. So now everybody can yell at me for the next 10 minutes, but I'm going to give a big shout out for Sun Tzu. I think it's a great system. Uh, Jack says, uh, John's really funny, but Bill isn't funny at all. John has more <laughs> hair. He has gray and brown, and he has a nice backdrop. Bill just has a laundry door. So, so I agree with that. So thanks for that. So yeah, that's clear. One in this organization. Uh, yeah, ninjas, ninjas, keeping everybody honest here, reminding us of what we provide. So, besides the rule booklet, there's PDFs online. One thing I've started to do this week because I had some new content. If you saw Napoleon's Imperium, we did a preview video about Napoleon's Imperium. So that's actually on the product page. You can get product information via video, and that's really just people volunteering to give us videos. I did the same thing. Uh, Mo's a game table who's here. Um, he did a he did an interview with Mike Wilner on Prelude to Revolution. So that's also on the product page. And I thank Mo for doing that. So um, so Mark has just Mark's just ruined it. He's just oh he just said your internet connection's amazing because it hasn't dropped yet. So all we need now is for it to drop. Oh, oh, it just dropped. See, I told you that was gonna happen. Good Lord, Matt. No, great job by the technician who's probably enjoying all those free games from 
from Compass. Well, all the new unreleased free games. That's yes, exactly. So Michael on Facebook, thanks for joining Michael. Lock and load move some of their games to online pay and play. You might want to check them out. Yeah, I saw some pretty cool. They've I think they've partnered with some development companies. They do uh, really a step beyond Vassal. It's really a full-fledged system. It's really fancy. It's really nice. They're doing uh, they're doing some nice work there. Um, okay, so Tom Hall is owed a new keyboard from Bill Thomas. So Bill's going to send Tom Hall. <laughs> so Bill's going to come up with a game with a large box. Do we have a large? So Stellar Horizons, I think a, a Logitech keyboard would fit in Stellar Horizons box. So so Tom, if you order Stellar Horizons, uh, you can, my dog's playing with a toy behind me. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, PDFs. Uh, yeah, scenarios are not usually included. Um, it's a, that's a separate scenario booklet. So this is about the PDFs we post online. Basically, uh, what Bill has is, uh, what Bill has for the website is to make sure we have the main core rule booklet always available on the website. So if there's a second secondary book, typically it's not on the website. I hope Applebee's. I think we're keeping Applebee's in business. Uh, this is a great comment. This is one of my favorite comments tonight. So watching Bill do customer service is like its own tactical game. <laughs> yeah, we need cohesion hit system in the game as well. Let's see what else we've got. Uh, so what else we got going here? Yeah, this is like a baseball game. You guys are great. So this is the most comments we've had. We're also, this is the biggest crowd we've had. I'm sure it has nothing to do with advertising. And there's a free game giveaway tonight. I'm sure it has absolutely nothing to do with that at all. Uh, here's a here's a good one, which we'll actually get to an important customer question. If I could, okay. oh my gosh, there are so many questions. I just lost it. There are so many comments. There are so many comments. I'm serious. This is like a serious problem. I've told that they need to allow me to tag comments so I can keep track. No one. Yeah. It's so many comments. Hold on. This is great. No, I'm not complaining. Um, okay, so Tom Hall, so I'm trying to catch up here. So sorry, this is out of order. So Tom says there's a, some level of marketing to be had for free to play, but it's not a small niche market like tabletop war games. So yeah, so Tom, um, yeah, I there's definitely, you know, that counterpoint, you know, I've seen online that says, you know, it's definitely a goodwill gesture just to make stuff available everything free online. And, and of course with COVID, nobody can get together face to face anymore. So I, I definitely get, I definitely get all these different perspectives. Um, we're not, we're definitely not here to invalidate anything uh, at all. Um, you know, we hear all sides. Um, so any comment on that bill uh, about uh, marketing about the concept, there's some marketing to be had to say, hey, we're giving some, I mean, we're doing free vassal, it's just the timing of it's a little different, I guess. Uh, uh, oh, here's a clarification. Maybe I'll do this one. So, Mark, I don't want I don't want Mark to worry at all. Please don't dump Vassal. I don't use it yet, but plan to. So, Bill, you have to be more clear. Bill, you've got Mark worried that we're dropping Vassal. No, I never so, said that. I, I what are you doing to our? You're you're scaring everybody now. So you need to explain. What okay, we're not dropping Vassal. Okay, the only thing we're doing is we're like I said, we wait for anywhere from three to six months to release the vassal. Okay. So that's my take on that. So no, we're not dropping vassal. So if it got that out of what I was saying, then that's not um, what I was saying. <laughs> and we were looking at the table. <laughs> we were looking at the table thing you threw out as a alternative. I can't hear you. Oh, okay. Now you can hear me. Okay. Yeah. Mute yourself. I, I, yeah, I've got all these controls. See, I, well, if I gave you a mute button for me, I'd never get to talk. So I'm not talking about the mute button. I, I'm saying I liked it. <laughs> that's for the that's first not time, happening. The, in five town halls, I actually liked it because I could, I didn't have to listen to you. I could see your lips moving, but it wasn't, see? See, that's <laughs> what I like. My, that's my Applebee leftovers. Okay. Um. <laughs> Appetizers. Appetizer. So, Jack, I'm sorry. I don't have an update on the Eastern Front Quad. Um, just the agreement signed. Uh, you know, it's in the works. Um, 
I will I will have an update on that, Jack. So sorry, it's just not something um, we're doing quite yet. Uh, one question I want to mention for everybody, a quick topic is we had an excellent question come in from Steve, who's uh, joined us tonight as well. He's made the suggestion about, can we do the old, like the general magazine, everybody? Can we do the old opponents wanted section in the as a print in uh, Paper Wars to have an opponents wanted section? So, Bill, um, what do you think about that idea? Is that you doing a squeaky toy? I'll, I'll show you if my dog comes here. I'll show you what's happening. There's a squeaky toy underneath underneath me, I, and it's not me playing with it. Trust me. Now, what were you saying? So there, it's not a question here, but it was a question that was sent in earlier in the week oh. about wh what about doing an opponent's wanted listing for paper wars? Yeah, I, I was going to do it, but then I got, um, well, I got voted down by Ty and John <laughs> because they said, well, it should be online. And I said, yeah, you can do that too. But I think it's just a throwback to the old days. Yeah. And a lot of people, you'd be surprised how many customers don't really do anything online okay yeah. they don't like computers and stuff like that so i thought it'd just be pretty neat to have an opponent's wanted ad in the um in the magazine but john and ty voted me down and <laughs> they said i'm an old school and that's everything's internet and we're not going back there so yeah well we talked about it today so uh you know i've, I've come around i've come around a little bit right so, uh, you know, with Consum World, uh, having done it 20 plus years now, the forum, uh, the majority, the vast majority of people are never online. Even with Board Game Geek, the vast majority of people don't get online. So there's definitely a market, a huge market out there uh, for our niche that they just never go online. So I know through the catalog bill, I think you know the numbers through the catalog, how many people just never go online and buy, buy yeah. Compass games, but they just never go online, right? Yeah, no, they don't even like going on the computer. So uh, just to let everybody know what I'm going to be doing, and I'll share something here. Um, there's a few. So I want to thank Steve uh, for that question. And um, so there's a few things that are going to happen. And one is that, uh, you know, it looks like for Paper Wars, we're going to try to make that happen. I'll keep speaking with Bill and, and Ty about that. Um, also, what I want to mention was uh, we'll add to the new website. I'm going to do some research about adding... Uh, an ability where you can, um, through logging in, uh, you can have your own opponents wanted online for what games you have and which ones you'd like to play. And I'll work on some kind of a system around that that helps everybody so you can play online. Also, I just want to share as well that um, I don't know how many people are familiar with Discord. So Discord, definitely among the younger generation of gamers out there. If you've heard of Discord, you could give me a plus one, but it's quite popular. I've had it. Uh, it's on Consum World, for example. It's on top of the news desk to join our Discord channel. You can see here. You can have uh, you can have voice channels. You can talk like we're doing here. You can have video channels like we're doing right now. So you can do literally. You can do your vassal and play and talk. Uh, but it's all through this Discord channel. And uh, you can see there's various topics on the, along the left, like what's on the table, marketplace, Wednesday night. You know, you can have whatever topics you want. And you can have voice and video. So I do have, it's probably hard to see, I have a, a Compass Games uh, channel reserved. So um, my goal is in the next four to six weeks to populate uh, the structure to get it defined of how it's going to be organized. So if you want to come in to talk about playtesting or games and development or any announcements or we'll have, uh, you know, we'll have topics about our videos, how to find our videos, etc. We'll have a, a dedicated uh, Discord channel for everybody to use, so that that can help you just for many different things. So I just want to mention that. What I also so that's I hope that's good news for everybody. So we'll have an opponents wanted listing. I think that was a great idea from Steve. So we're gonna embrace Steve's idea. We'll also do it online after sometime after the new website's there. Maybe by early next year we'll have it. Hopefully. And then we'll have a Discord. We'll launch our Discord uh, channel officially in a few weeks. So we're adding some new services uh, and improving our website, just to let everybody know. And another thing I want to share is this. Let me turn off sharing just for a you moment. Your house. Wasn't that uh, your house? My what? Isn't that where you live? I wish. No. 
Oh, okay. I thought that's where you left. All right. We got this little guy right here, right? So we, and you're familiar with this game, Bill? No. Okay. So this is a, um, a monster game, probably five maps by GDW Operation Crusader. All right. By Frank Chadwick. And, and I'm, I am going to share. We are now working on Operation Crusader, which will be refined. Uh, so here's the map. It's using the same sort of pixelated uh, mezzotint, mezzotint clear terrain effect. As you can see, Barty is right there. Uh, so we've got, uh, it's going to be not five maps, whatever number of maps. It's going to be four full-size maps, but some pretty heavy overlap to the game. So here's the game, the original by GDW. Talk to Frank about how could we make the game better. You know, it's been a long time. So uh, we're uh, working on it now. It's going to be four maps, but we'll have shorter scenarios. So you won't need all four maps. Uh, that's usually the first question I get. The next question I get, and this is similar to that solitaire play question earlier, some people, they love the system, Crusader, but they hated the uh, pre-plotted movement. You had to pre-plot all your movements, and there were log sheets, etc. cetera. So uh, rest assured, we're going to have the systems changed where it's not going to have anything pre-plotted for movement. So, um, and Frank's, uh, you know, refining the game. Uh, he's obviously got the order of battle, etc. but we've got the full map here. It's four full maps with a pretty heavy overlap. Uh, so I'll get dimensions. It's not on our website yet as a pre-order, but I just want to share uh, that we have Operation Crusader uh, as a designer signature edition is now in the mix, now being worked on. The rules are already done. Order of battles and multiple. There's many more scenarios. Operation Crusader didn't have a lot of scenarios. That was another sort of a, a ding against the game that it was a great system, just, just lacked scenarios. So Frank's got a bunch of scenarios for this as well. So I'm excited about that. Right. Uh, project and Bill, are you you're excited about that project too, right? Of course I am. All right. So uh, Ninja says that we should have corporate sponsors. Uh, <laughs> A couple of these. And I've got to do. I've got to do this thing I had planned for tonight, but uh, well, maybe some other time we'll get to do it. I mean, I'm still getting these. Look what you've done with this Applebee's thing. Oh, Bill. I can, like, we got like six or seven. I cannot, I cannot get away from it. Um, can you play Vassal on your phone? Um, I'm used to playing hard copies. So, uh, oh boy, I'm thinking through this. Um, well, you have to have, you have to have Vassal connected online. See that that's to me, this is where it's my stumbling block. But you're 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 connected to Vassal typically live with the other person to see the moves happening, uh, versus sending files. So if you're connected online, why not just have a Skype channel for talk? So people use Skype uh, Skype for free usually to talk, or they're using Discord. We'll have Compass Games Discord. They can use that. John, why didn't you just say I don't know? Uh, I don't know. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my but, but but is it like this? Is it like this? So, is it is it like this? My mouse. I'm like, hey, Bill, I'm uh, hey. I'm doing my operations phase movement now. I'm checking my stack. Oh, you know, here we go. I I'm think I get through this, All okay? Right. Because I've been I'm in one of those moods where I want to tell people stuff, but I'm gonna not do it. Oh, now you're gonna say it's my fault. Thanks a lot. Because I'm getting in that mood where I just want to spill the beans on, and oh, on something that see you say I don't tell you things, right? You don't tell me who who had six games in the warehouse that they're not shipping that they decided to show in the last episode. Who who did who was that? Mm, can't remember. <laughs> I'm yeah. just kidding. All right, so I gotta find Peter's comment so I can hide it. I don't know where it went. Oh, it's all the plus ones for Operation Crusader. Really? All right. Oh, yeah. A lot of people know Crusader, and now I can't find how to hide. There it is. Okay. There we go. All right. So let me move on to other questions. Uh, okay. He's definitely ordering Stellar Horizons now. So, Tom, please, on your order in the comments field, put the type of Logitech keyboard you want Bill to send you in the box since you spilled your drink all over your keyboard. <laughs> so, uh Dan says he wants a 62-inch keyboard. 
I have no idea what the 62 means. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Okay. So next, yeah, we'll, we'll have, oh my gosh, you guys are killing me. <laughs> I'm, I'm oh, going to show this at this, at this rate, I'm going to show this thing. I'm, I'm serious. I'm, I'm, I'm getting that close. All right. All right. We're not going to talk about Applebee's anymore. All right. So let's see here. Um, okay. So hey, let's get away from Applebee's. Let's talk about America Bomber. Oh, sh it's Applebee's again as a target. Good God, you guys, would you stop doing that to me here? Oh, my gosh. Okay. This is, see, this is horrible. Okay. Um, All because of something you said. Uh, you said it, not me. Okay. So, yes, we'll sponsor something at Applebee's. We'll get everybody together. Fine. <laughs> And my dog's going crazy underneath me. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Everything's about Applebee's right now. So hold on. Uh, okay. Here's another one. A player, uh, a player's promo uh, who has all, he has all these great ideas, like uh, besides assessing my mental state, which is not, he's not very impressed with. So what about a Facebook group, Compass Game Players Wanted? I don't know. <laughs> 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 I'm a quick learner. Yeah, you're just I mean, I don't Mo could create it on his own and just F F you guys. I'm just doing it. So absolutely. More power to him. So now a Facebook group was brought up by Ty. I think Ty Bamba brought up Facebook group for players wanted. Um, the only thing I was thinking about for everybody is if you want more organization and structure around the games you own or if you've played them or not, um, you know, a database might come in handy, a simple way to enter things where it's not complicated. But, you know, I don't know Facebook, you know, maybe a Google integration. I, I don't know how to do it. I don't know. Uh, saves Dead Trees. I think that's Saves Dead Trees. That's probably about uh, Vassal and stuff. Oh, no, that's about not doing it uh, in, uh, well, in Paper Wars, we'll just do maybe one page of Opponents Wanted, probably. So we won't we won't be killing any trees, I don't think. So uh, let's see here. On uh, Facebook, there's a War Gamers Opponents Wanted page. It's for ads only and works. Okay, Mark, so thanks for the Thank tip you, on that. Well, let's see here. Um, I'm in full retreat tonight. Okay. <laughs> Oh, this is about, yeah, this is about Sun Tzu, yes. Digital minimalist. Thank you, Vexed. Absolutely. Sun Tzu is definitely minimalist approach. Absolutely. Here's a bunch of plus ones for Crusader. Everybody? Is there a Compass Discord channel? Uh, yes, it's right here, but I haven't launched it yet. So it's got the nice fancy logo. Top left under the SPI logo because there's an SPI channel, but there is a Compass channel. I just haven't launched it yet. So yes, we we do have uh, Tom. We do have a Compass Discord. I just haven't launched it yet. Um, so that's just so you know. Sorry, still going through questions here. Um, <laughs> And he says, right now we're watching Compass Discord. I think that has to do with our interactions, the Discord, actually. So, so there you go. Uh, so this is a uh, Jack says, uh, I think a one-page opponents wanted with a name would be good. Uh, time zone and an email, sort of like the old newspaper personal ads. See, I think there should be a picture of people like dating sites, you know, holding the, du the ducky lips, you know. Mm, you know, I want to play this game, right, Bill? See, there you go. He thinks it's a great idea. I can tell already. So, so Frank Chadwick, Crusader, uh, we're all good there. Um, okay, a lot of, lot of good comments here. Uh, boy, gosh, lots of comments here. I'm trying to actually, uh, thanks for, uh, oh my gosh, okay. Yeah, thanks for the uh, big thumbs up on Crusader. So uh, everybody seems really happy about that. Uh, nobody's using Skype because Microsoft bought it. Okay, you can use uh, Discord, and Compass will have a Discord channel. And there's also uh, Teams. There's something else. Yeah, we're not going to talk about Teams. Bill, do you know what Teams is? No. Okay. Do you know what the Applebee's Bomber is? Yes. Okay. There we go. Now, Defending America is really subtitled Defending Applebee's. We have to add a scenario. Like Greg's here. If I can get Greg to slip in, maybe, well, 
That would have been for America Bomber. See, that's the trouble. This is defending America. It's a different. This Correct. is where you're. This is where you're attacking the America Bombers, right? Yeah, but you're trying to protect. Yeah. Applebee's. And they're right. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. We could try that. I'll talk to Greg. Tom's got it right. A dating profile for war gamers. There you go. Bill, Bill's excited. Bill's excited about that idea. We can come we can compare dice collections, you know? They get really good. There you go. So we got a lot of people excited about the dating site concept here, I think. Although Tom says it does not com compute at all. He's he oh. thinks it does not work. Okay, so I think, uh, yeah, so thanks, everybody. I'll get better with all your questions and comments when I'm able to pin comments so I can keep track of the ones I need to talk about. Uh, but, yeah, a lot of great comments and questions came in. I'll do a last call on questions if you want. Um, but in the meantime, we're going to give away, as promised. We're going to ask uh, Bill what the free game, what the drawing is. Which game are we doing a free drawing for with all these live attendees here? Red Poppies 3. Red Poppies 3. Awesome. That's, I want, I want to enter this one. I, I love World War I. So I, I, think, I think that's exciting. So the way it's going to work, everybody, is we're going to now enter into the giveaway phase of this evening. So for you putting up with Bill and I for over an hour, you are going to have a chance to win a free game. So uh, there's about 66 people online right now. So a lot of people looking forward to the free game. So if you would, please, uh, you're going to pick a number between 1 and 100, but don't do it yet. Wait till I do a five-second countdown. <laughs> and when I do the countdown, you're not going to put any comments. Do not put any comments at all in the comment box because then it's going to divide up the numbers and I'm going to have to figure things out. And there's so many people online um, it's going to be really tough to do it. And uh, by the way, the free game that we're giving away is right here. It's right here. There's a picture of it right there, assault artillery. So that's pretty darn exciting that we're going to give that away. <laughs> so, and I, and I, love, I love the game because I have it on my wall. And <laughs> I could just be showing brick behind me, but I love this game so much. I'm covering my nice brick motif. Okay, so here's how it works. I'm going to do a five-second countdown. I want everybody to enter a number between 1 and 100. And no other comments, please. No other comments because of the lag. Counting down now. Five, four, three, two, one. Everybody, please now only enter a number between 1 and 100. No other comments on Facebook or YouTube, please. And then we're going to wait about 20 or 30 seconds uh, for the comments to come in. Did I tell you I'm getting like um, in, on the 1st of August, I'm going to begin three or four more games. The 1st of August. Oh, no, that's on 1st of September. I'm sorry. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to share more about that. I mean, that's uh, yeah, that's something we probably should talk about tonight before we let everybody go. No, I want it. I want to tell them the other thing, but I'm not gonna. The surprise we have. So, am I gonna play this clip that I showed Billy earlier, given no. the way it's gone? Yeah, no, I don't think you can. Okay. <laughs> it's like I don't know if you can put Applebee's in an actual game. Yeah. Uh, it's like, can you put Walmart in a game? I don't yeah, think you can. if you're blowing it up. <laughs> no, I don't think you can. Oh, yeah. All right, so we've got a lot of uh, numbers in, so I'm going to give it, uh, be fair to everybody, let's give it another tw 20 seconds. Anyway, that's Stream. <laughs> and by the way, I want to I want to compliment you, Bill. Uh, yes, well, you know, you know, I, I pray for you every day. I wake up. I, I, please, Bill, <laughs> please don't yell at me. Please be nice <laughs> to me. And I'm like, I'm like, and and like Mo's gaming table did an interview with you. What is it about a week or two ago? Did did Mo's? Yeah, you know, we got to give a shout out to Mo. He did an interview with you. I need to let everybody know about. Was that about one or two weeks ago? And yeah, your video your video did not hold up like it did tonight. Like Mo Mo right now is probably just cussing cussing like a sailor, a drunk sailor right now because your your connection was just not good for his broad. And there's my dog, Frankie. Frankie. Come here. All right. All right. So we're going to, he's going crazy. So we're going to, uh, 
we're going to go ahead and give away the game now, Bill. So uh, go ahead and start your die roll. It's going to be a number between 1 and 100. But are you, do you see any yeah, you'll see it after. numbers? I see a lot of numbers. I I'm see. Behind. You'll see it. It's it's under comment section. I've I've got. Uh, I'm I'm the Oz. I'm the Oz behind the curtain. I've got the mute button for myself, which you can't use ever. Uh, okay, what is it? Sixty nine. All right, the number is 69. So I'm going to go through and show some numbers here that are close to that. So remember this. <laughs> Anybody who I, I, can, I, can make a, I can make an off-color joke right now. Yeah, if, if, if Lead Magnet wins with a 69, my life is fulfilled. I'm, I'm done. Here's what I'm I say. Done. If anybody wins with a 69, then they're winning more than just red poppies. I was going to say, so uh, lead magnet 67, uh, John was just behind but further away. That's not going to work. Oh, so God. we're going to stick with uh, leg, uh, lead magnet at uh, 67. We're looking for 69. I'm still looking at the numbers. Hold on. Uh, okay. So, oh, my gosh. This is amazing. So here's a number that was entered. So, <laughs> so that well, we'll allow the rounding rule. We're going to treat that as 70. So that's a 70, just to let you know. So to be fair to 68, if there's a 68, we want to be fair to 70 and 68. So hold on. I'm still scrolling. What's 69? I think you meant 69. There's another 67. Okay. So let me make sure there was no... Uh, 68 or 70. Let me just double check the records. I've got to see if there's any 68s or 70s. Yeah, you are. And I'm sure people will be yelling at me if there was a 68 or a 70. Okay. So the winner through the, and, th and this is really good to show you how flexible we are and how we're all developers at heart. We're going to use a rounding rule live on Compass, on Compass TV. And again, just our brain power to just to come to this conclusion. It's rounding up to 70 to be fair to 68 and any other 70s. But Thomas Hall has no competition. Thomas Hall, there were no 68s. There were no 70s. Tom Hall is our winner. Tom has won a copy of Red Poppy's Campaigns Volume 3, Assault Artillery. There you go. There is our winner. Okay. Um, keep the same numbers. Keep the same numbers. Oh, here. Well, here's a here's a here's an errata. So we also have, as we know in game, we hate errata. Bill, do you hate errata? Yes. We had some errata. Somebody said they typed seventy, but it came out as twenty-one. <laughs> I can see where that would happen. <laughs> so. Okay. All right. What are we doing? Keep the same numbers. Yeah. And keep you're rolling again. We're gonna do a prelude to rebellion. rebellion. How about prelude? That? Oh, great. So that's a, a hat tip to Mike Wilner for Prelude to Revolution. So yeah, Prelude to Rebellion, a Canadian game. Perfect. Um, and that's a great topic. We did shipping to Canada tonight. So we did a lot of good Canadian discussions. Yeah, and well, that's nobody internationally wins this. <laughs> right. so, oh, 97. 97. Oh, that's okay. That's way up there. Hold on. That's a big number. I'm uh, okay. Let me do this. I'm going to do it as I go. So, uh, 97. Shoot. Okay. So, I'm going as I go. Kevin Conway, who's done some cool modules and other things. Uh, he does, he does a lot of cool stuff. Kevin, he's an 83. And you said it was a 97. Oh, okay. Mark William Humphreys. I think it's only appropriate that the person with the longest name went with the biggest number. So, I think that's good. So, Mark has probably got the lead right now for 97. Hold on. Let's see if anybody else is challenging him. Oh, we had a 92. Darren. Darren's very close, but a little too low with 92. I'm sorry, Darren. So I get the I have the delight to announce that Mark William Humphreys is now the proud owner of Prelude to Rebellion from Compass Games. Well, we sure did two giveaways. We did two giveaways tonight. Right. That's awesome. And did you uh, want to say anything else? So, so, okay, yeah, instructions for Tom and for Mark, please send an email 
Uh, sorry, let me type this out. I always need to do this. I should have had this ready. So I'm just going to show this here. So please uh, send an email to sales at compassgames.com with the game that you won. Just make sure you mention that John did a better job than Bill during the town hall. And I would now like to claim my prize. And uh, that will get you expedited shipping if you say I did I did a better job than Bill. Just kidding. Yeah, okay. Maybe not. So. Yeah, I'll get charged for the expedited shipping is what will happen there. So, yeah, please, both of you, congratulations for winning. And with that and with my dog going crazy here, I'll let you uh, close out, Bill, with any uh, – final comments that you have. I think we had a real good session with a lot of lively comments and some good feedback. So I'll let yep. you close, close yeah. out. I think it was fun and always enjoy these and hope you'll have a good time like I do. And that's it. Be safe, enjoy, and hopefully I'll see you in two weeks. All right, Bill, we'll see you in two weeks for the next, uh, our town hall number six. Uh, again, we'll be uh, giving away a free game uh, at that time next week. Please join us a week from tonight. For Compass Games Live, we'll be having a new episode, and I'll be announcing in the future if we'll have any special guests on next week. I'll be sure to announce that uh, on Monday is when I'll probably make the announcement for our next broadcast for Compass Games Live. So I want to thank everybody uh, for being with us tonight, wherever you dialed in, whatever time zone you uh, came in from. And I want to thank you all very much for all your support. Thanks for all your great questions and feedback, and we can't wait to see you again in two weeks. Good night, everybody. Good night.